Her loss came out a couple days ago, and I've had the weekend to listen to it. And I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done listening to it. I don't know if that's because I've played it out or if it's because I'm ready to listen to the next thing that I want to listen to. But this video isn't about me re-reviewing or fixing together my final thoughts of her loss. It's more so addressing certain narratives that have gone on around the album, reception to it, and whether or not I think it'll have a long shelf life. Regardless of reception, we can all agree that this is at least a decent Drake album. Yes, it's a Drake album that features 21 Savage. It's not a collab. It's, hey, I took a trip to another country with my best friend and I'm posting it all on my Instagram story. See it from my POV the album. Regardless, I'm going to tell you why so many people think that this album is Drake's best since if you're reading this is too late. <laughs> it's because we need to pretend that everything that dropped in between if you're reading this is too late and her loss never happened. I don't care how you feel about views. I don't care how you feel about Scorpion. I don't care how you feel about More Life. I don't care how you feel about CLB. I don't care how you feel about Honestly Never Mind. Every major release that Drake has done in between that time frame, whether people like to admit it or not, has lowered the bar to such an extreme degree that an album where Drake is pushing 40, still rapping about the woes of being a single bachelor, is considered great and or mind blowing. The bar is constantly being lowered for Drake whether or not people realize it. And I think that's because his albums over the years have gotten less and less ambitious. So fans collectively just have to accept what they've got and try to make the best out of it. And I say this is one of Drake's biggest fans. Hearing this record, along with some features from 21, as a response to everything that he's been dropping, for the most part, uh, with the exception of uh, a lot of hits off of What A Time To Be Alive, which we will talk about as well, and Dark Lane demo tapes, has been trash at its worst and meh at its best. So of course, when Drake raps over these beats that make him sound like hip hop royalty, like on Middle Of The Ocean, people are reminded of some of his best deep cuts like The Ride and Say What's Real. And I think it's that reminiscence of a time that was incredible for Drake that makes the newer cuts where he emulates that style better than they actually are. Not to say that they aren't still good, Good. I mean, these cuts from Drake off of her loss are still some of the best that he's released in years. That isn't to take away some of the witty and sometimes funny bars on this album. That isn't to take away from how much I enjoy Broke Boys or On Bullshit. It's just to say that anything smells like air freshener when you've been sniffing shit for so long. And I noticed this lack of ambition when I was listening to the album off my first reaction. Like why Scout 21 to make an album that you easily could have made by yourself? An album that you marketed as a collab, yet 21 seems to be that background friend hyping you up on your IG story. That's that lack of ambition that I'm talking about. Because Drake has never been the pioneer musically as we've seen off of his last effort honestly never mind full of these uninspired oftentimes looping and very boring house beats content wise it would have been interesting to see a bit of maturity on this album from his previous works but that doesn't happen which leaves this record very interchangeable content wise to his previous efforts off of what a time to be alive which is why it generates so many comparisons that and it's actually a collab album with him in future works off if you're reading this is too late and some of his earlier cuts as well even the cuts in between on some of the weakest records that he dropped between 2016 and 2018 far surpassed the highs on her loss for instance if i told you to take some of the best songs off scorpion mob ties in my feelings as creepy as it is jaded try redemption and hotline bling off views if you put those songs individually up against the songs individually on her loss are you honestly picking any of the songs from her loss if i have to answer that question i'm gonna tell you no so when we get to what a time to be alive the actual collab album comparison that we can make here anyone who's listened to the two records cannot legitimately with a straight face sit up here and tell me that the highest moments off what a time to be alive live from the gutter digital dash diamonds dancing even Jumpman, which I think is one of the worst songs off What A Time To Be Alive. You can't tell me that these aren't moments that you're going to take over anything from her loss. And since I know that we're going to get into a conversation about you shouldn't compare these records because they're two totally different projects, the reason I request and would love for Drake to become more ambitious with his releases is because I always find myself asking, why listen to the new release when there's older records that do what these new releases are doing that are better, more ambitious for their time, and less cringy considering that Drake was much younger when he made them. Despite me liking a lot of the material off of her loss, I'm not confident in its longevity because majority of the record feels like Drake trying on the same clothes that he wore in his 20s without realizing how much him putting them in the washing machine and re-wearing these outfits has stripped them of their color, freshness, and that he needs to get a new wardrobe. This isn't me recanting or changing my opinion of the record either. 
I still like her loss. I do. But I know why I like it and how long I'll probably end up liking it for. The second piece of reception that I wanted to talk about was the Megan the Stallion bar. I know people have been dragging Drake's name through the mud over this bar, and I've seen many think pieces, most of which I don't think are warranted, calling him out for things like misogyny as if that hasn't been a huge part of Drake's career and his foundation since his infancy. I mean, unless we've been listening to different artists for the last decade and a half almost, Drake has always come across in the relationships that he describes as controlling, ultra manipulative, likely to guilt trip. Does it surprise you that he would ultimately get to a point in his career where he basically slams some women for a couple tracks? And I understand that an album like Her Loss makes that misogyny manifest in a different way. On the same album where Drake recognizes and acknowledges the problem that men's influences have in the decisions that women make with their bodies, he proceeds to clown them for decisions that they made with their body. And that's if I'm to interpret this bar with generosity and not to look at it for what it is, a blatant Megan the Stallion diss. So I'll say the same thing about Drake that I said about the baby. And this is also why in the reaction that I did, it didn't really feature me reacting to any of these bars because I'm just kind of over Drake dissing people and taking it seriously. Outside of him being messy, the constant shots and shade at Kanye I just know doesn't go anywhere, so it's really no point in him rapping about it for me personally. You reminding me that the beef is still active after we saw you basically crying over Kanye performing in front of you, regardless of whatever the reason was for, doesn't really hit the same. So when you throw shots at Megan the Stallion, no pun intended, I'm wondering why, when the situation doesn't really involve you, the last thing I expected after Drake dissed Megan the Stallion was to see Lil Yachty cosplaying as rap genius, trying to break down why Drake's bar wasn't making fun of a woman it was actually making fun of women. But the only thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to this wasn't the overdramatic response I saw from people on Twitter. It was this almost insinuation that only people who have a problem with Drake's bar are the ones who believe Megan the Stallion or people who don't have a problem with Drake's bar are the ones who believe Tory Lanez. But Drake's bar wasn't that he was in support of Tory, it was that she was lying about being shot, which is an entirely separate issue that has actually been verified. That if you cannot fathom and you think that a doctor would risk his medical license by lying for some celebrity that he doesn't even know, then there's no hope for you anyway and you'll be a fucking idiot. Keep in mind, even if Drake did publicly go on record and say that he believed Tory over Megan Thee Stallion, I wouldn't comment about it because that would just be up to Drake's opinion. But when you're the most popular rapper in the world, basically, and you hop on your record to say that someone's lying about violence happening to them, yeah, it makes you look kind of crazy and obviously it's going to rub people the wrong way. While not recommended to respond via social media. I do understand the frustration that goes along with constantly being attacked for being attacked. So she gets on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. I'm mad at you. Stop mentioning my name. And so another group of people comes out. The group of people who aren't rappers that tell rappers how to respond when things outside of rap happen to them. Basically telling her without saying it, I'd rather be entertained by you rapping to someone else, arguing over whether or not you've been shot, as opposed to understanding why it'd be reasonable for someone who was shot to be annoyed for being made fun of for being shot. I know y'all have heard it before when someone says, when so-and-so gets out, they gonna make the hardest first day out record of all time. And this applies to any rapper who's currently incarcerated right now. This fetishization of trauma when it comes to artists is incredibly strange. As if to say at your earliest convenience, the first thing you should be thinking about is going to the studio to record a rap song. That ideology and that egging on has manifested and convinced artists that they need to make entertainment out of trauma. That's one of the first things that Lil TJ did when he woke up from his unconsciousness after being shot seven times. He made a rap song about it, which wasn't received well because it wasn't rapped well or mixed well or any of the above, but, but that was one of the first things that he did. Why? It's understandable for people to want to be entertained in a rap beef or a rap battle where the circumstances are limited to just the two rappers basically talking at one another from hundreds of miles across the country, generally speaking. But when it's outside the bounds of rap or the issue stems from real life, you'd expect there to be a cutoff in the average person's or the average viewer's mind. Like, hey, yeah, I don't really need to hear a rap song about this. You going through it in real life. Let's say I did agree though and think that Megan Thee Stallion should go back and forth with Drake over whether or not she's been shot on record. One, Megan Thee Stallion doesn't have a single record in her discography that's competing with any of Drake's best. I'm sorry. I don't believe in her ability to rap back at Drake. Her responding through tweet is her saving herself from the embarrassment that will eventually come her way. But two, let's say that she did have the lyrical pedigree to go toe to toe with Drake. 
no one would acknowledge it as a successful diss at Drake more likely than not because she's a woman number one and two there's already an onslaught of people that don't believe her and hate her just for the controversy that she's been in the last two years and by controversy I mean being victim to a shooting anyway I think it's far too complicated of a thing to address in a rap song especially with the case coming up in a few weeks anyway if anyone has the right to make music about the situation it would be the accuser and the accused in this case where I criticized the baby for clout chasing rapping about an issue that had absolutely nothing to do with him I could criticize Drake for getting to a point of career stagnation not knowing what to talk about so he's carelessly talking about anything I think many people confuse what I said in my initial thoughts for her loss as me saying that Drake's career is going to end because I said his era is coming to an end but I mean the era that popularized Drake this era I think is enough to sustain Drake with the people that he's gathered since his infancy but this also won't won't be the era to make him more ambitious or push him to the next level. Of course, only time will tell, but I'm really hoping this era Drake, the bitter, lonely bachelor era, comes to an end so we can get some more, I guess, digestible content. I'm only speaking for myself though. If you enjoy that type of content and that style, continue to eat it up. And please let me know how you feel about her loss. Do you think it'll have a long shelf life? Do you think that it's going to run its course really quickly and that we're going to be begging for another Drake project in a couple months? Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.